This week, one of the most historic days in Portland startup history. Marcelino Alvarez asks us all to rethink the waterfront in Portland. And the Portland Metro Innovation Hub needs somebody to lead innovation in our region. Let's get into it. Hello. Boy, oh boy, this week... I gotta warn you, this one may go a little long. I may get a little emotional. In the Portland startup community, I gotta tell you, it was a bit of a crazy one. Uh, I don't, honestly, I don't even know where to start. There were, there were a couple of big stories. And then another thing that I, I personally thought was a big deal that, that just also kind of blew up. There's like historic stuff happening. There's like stuff that really tears at my heartstrings. And there may finally be somebody to lead innovation in Portland throughout the metro region. Stick with me. Exciting week. If you miss this week in the Portland startup community, fear not. I'm here to bring you up to speed on everything that happened in Portland with the startups, with all the exciting stuff. So, you know, let's get right into it. I'm going to save the bigger story for later. The story that was most popular, I'll save for later, because the story that that kind of blew up on Wednesday, but, you know, didn't have as much time to, to get the views and that kind of stuff was honestly an historic historic day in the Portland startup community. Yeah, I said an historic, not a historic, an historic. Like back when I learned grammar, that's how you did it. It might not be modern day grammar, but I'm old. It was an historic day in the Portland startup community because we had a situation where not only one company announced $35 million dollars, in venture funding, two companies announced it simultaneously, same day after, after covering this community for more than 16 years. This is a first after working in this community for 30 years. This is a first. I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen this happen before. So there you go. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you were here to experience it as well. It's like a full solar eclipse kind of event or like Aurora Borealis coming down to Portland kind of event. Let me take you through what happened. So first, uh, my, my friends at hydraulics were kind enough to say, Hey, you know, Wednesday, we're going to make this big announcement. We're going to tell people we've raised $35 million in our series B financing, perhaps equally important Oregon Venture Fund is part of that. So it's a, it's a local company doing data lake digital stuff that's very popular with people. I don't, I don't want to get in like, the technical term stuff. It's very popular right now with the, with the AI people and the people with lots of data and, and hydraulics timed it really well. And they're just like, Hey, this looks like an opportunity. And then the market just kind of shifted where they went. Mm, we kind of skated to where the puck was going to be. And now the puck is there and we're doing well and investors like it. And so they raised $35 million. But I want to mention that Oregon Venture Fund also participated. And I think the key there is that, you know, when you get into these situations where local companies are doing amazing things and local investors get engaged. That's a win-win for the community. So that was a big deal. I was super excited about that. I'm like, there's no bigger news that's going to come out today than hydraulics raising 35 million until our friends over at Boulder Care announced that they had raised $35 million as well. Same day. Two Portland companies. I don't. They, I don't. I think this was just purely an accident that there were seventy million dollars of venture funding announced in one day, but they're both incredibly well timed startups. So hydraulics with the data and the AI and all those things, Boulder Care 
again, well-timed, but unfortunately in a very negative way, focuses on the opioid crisis, uh, focuses on uh, misuse of alcohol and helping people recover from that, both opioids and alcohol, in kind of a telemedicine way. So especially if you're in Portland where every other headline is a fentanyl headline, I think you can understand how their product and their service and their empathy is desperately needed at this point in time. So Boulder Care doing great work, Hydraulics doing great work, both of them raise $35 million and happen to announce it on the same day. It's kind of crazy. It really is crazy. Especially like when you think about the economy right now, money is super expensive. We're in a down economy and yet two companies in little old Portland wind up raising 35 million. Pretty impressive. Congrats to both of them. Can't wait to follow the journey from here. An historic day in the Portland startup community. I know I don't know what to expect week to week in Portland. This news keeps happening. So if you want me to keep you in the loop and let you know what's going on and keep you informed about all these amazing things, just subscribe. It's that easy. Just click subscribe. I'll keep you in the loop. You'll be good to go. The other big story that this one got a lot more attention probably as I promoted it in a very snarky way, but it's the, it's the Portland Metro Innovation Hub. And if folks haven't been following this project, like, you know, I don't know, like predating me probably 60 years ago, people would probably say things like, Portland really needs an innovation hub to help support things. And then, you know, as I joined the startup community 30 years ago, I was like, why doesn't Portland have an innovation hub to support these things? And then we started Pi and we're like, hey, maybe we can be kind of a hub of innovation to help support things. And then we started Built and we're like, maybe we can be a hub of innovation to support things. And then we tried, we really tried to start the Portland Innovation Quadrant, the Portland IQ, to see if it could be a hub of innovation. And then, you know, there are any number of new pursuits among the latest uh, Upstart Collective as a hub of innovation. But now, now the state, after all that whining and complaining and, and bickering, fully willing to take responsibility for the 30 years of complaining I've done, the state of Oregon has finally said, hey, you know what? Maybe we need an innovation hub, and maybe we would be willing to fund that activity. Rather than all of you folks running around volunteering your time, maybe we'll pay someone or someones to do that work. So I feel like it's a huge step forward for the state to recognize that need and take advantage of that opportunity to establish an innovation hub here in Portland. They're also establishing other innovation hubs throughout the state to support other regions, but then all of those innovation hubs are going to collaborate and stuff and things. So it could be a really, really impressive project once it's pulled off. But Portland Innovation Hub needs somebody to run it. And they also need a couple of kind of like wayfinder roles to help help the person running it, help other innovative people and startups in the Portland area. What I would like to do so I capture it accurately, because you know me, I'm doing all this stuff off the cuff. I want to read this part, the, the Innovation Hub, being led by Portland State, there's literally a laundry list of people from across the region. Multnomah County, Clackamas County, Washington County, all kinds of colleges, all kinds of SBDCs, private industry, public, all over the place who, are, who have been advising on this project. But let me give you the encapsulated kind of summary of what this hub project is. Portland State University will facilitate and host the Metro Region Innovation Hub, the hub, beginning in July of 2024. Funded by Business Oregon and other community partners, the hub serves the Tri-County Metro area and will provide regional entrepreneurs from all sectors, backgrounds, and business stages with accessible paths 
to all existing regional resources in networking, coaching, education, and capital access in order to foster and grow innovation-based businesses. The big news is they're looking to hire an executive director. They're also looking to hire those two other roles that are kind of wayfinding roles for folks, kind of like connectors in the community. So please, if that sounds like you, or that sounds like something that you would be interested in doing for the community with a salary and benefits, I'm not talking volunteer stuff. This is stuff you get paid to do. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, please check it out. Please apply. I'm on, I'm at full disclosure. I'm on the interview committee in some way. I'll be somewhere involved in that. So I look forward to your application coming through, maybe getting the chance to talk to you. And obviously really looking forward to the chance to collaborate with you and engage in the future. Should you succeed in landing one of those roles? because it's desperately needed in our community. So please apply if that sounds like you. Speaking of decisions that Portland makes, uh, I often like to refer to Portland as an, as a, as an area that, that is the way it is, as a city that is the way it is, because people were willing to stand up and make ridiculous decisions. And I, and I don't mean ridiculous in that those decisions were stupid or that they were, they were ill-informed. I mean that they were willing to, to stand up and take a chance on making a decision that could invite ridicule. Still the right decision, but also could be easily ridiculed. And you're like, what do you mean by a ridiculous decision, Rick? Well, I'm glad you asked. What I mean by ridiculous decisions are things like we were going to put a freeway along the river. And now that is Tom McCall Waterfront Park, which is one of our most amazing parks in the city. We had a parking garage outside of Nordstrom that could have remained a parking garage forever, but the city decided to transform it because of a ridiculous decision the city decided to transform it into Portland's living room. It's now Pioneer Courthouse Square, which is an amazing event facility for the entire city. You know, there are other things like the urban growth boundary. People are like, well, why don't you just let your city sprawl? And the state's like, nope, we're going to do an urban growth boundary and constrain Portland and force it to grow within a certain region. Other ridiculous decisions, the bottle bill, uh, making all of our beaches public, which makes the coast a place that the entire populace of the world can enjoy, not just individuals who can afford beachside access. So like all kinds of these ridiculous decisions, but in many ways, a lot of those ridiculous decisions happened a while ago. And so like, I'm always on the lookout for more modern ridiculous decisions like people who are really forward thinking who can you know really lead us to the next best version of portland uh tech fest northwest one of the one of the events i helped start and manage we had a great speaker named alan weber who was the the founder of fast company who uh, used to be a portland resident who really gave us a, a kind of roadmap for the next version of Portland and really spoke to some of this ri ridiculous decision making. I would say the person who most embodies that and and I most like admire in terms of her willingness to stand up and speak to these kind of decisions is Rakaya Adams. I've linked up her talks any number of times, but Rakaya now with the 1803 fund that she's running prominent person who is willing to really stand up and say, this might not be a popular opinion, but these are the ways that things should be done to make our community a much, much better place. She always seems willing to stand up and say, this is what I think, this is what Portland deserves, and this will make this a better place for everyone. And most recently, 
I, I didn't get a chance to attend it, but you heard me promote it. It was the Wings Conference that happened recently. They're starting to release a lot of their videos from their talks. And lo and behold, if I didn't come across another ridiculous decision from Marcelino Alvarez. And Marcelino gave a really impassioned speech, and I'll, I'll link it up so you can watch it. I encourage you to, to press pause, go watch Marcelino's talk from the Wings Conference about Portland as a, as a city surrounded by water that we don't think enough about. We don't think enough about how our community has access to those waterways, how we engage with those waterways, how we make the river part of our community. And he just delivers a, a, a fantastic talk about the potential for Portland and our water fronts. I, I really can't say much more. I highly encourage you to go watch it. Just a great talk. And, uh, and one of those I've added to my Portland playlist and will uh, reference quite often. I was, I was just blown away. Uh, I got a little emotional there. So uh, please go watch that one. And then, uh, yeah, that's so it, it was just a really crazy week here in town. Uh, some of the things that weren't so crazy, Demolicious title changed hands again so i i i sit here and wait for a you know a demolitious where maybe maybe the defending champ will get the chance to to retain the belt but that didn't happen new title holder company called flat so uh yeah so tune in june let's see if flat can retain you know i'm starting to i'm starting to, <laughs> starting to lose hope but i don't know maybe in june flat can retain that title and, and we'll see what happens. Uh, thank you, Hydraulics. Thank you, Boulder Care, for creating an historic day in the Portland startup community. Thank you to Marcelino for sharing his vision and his, you know, ridiculous ideas about what we could be doing as a city. Always appreciated. And of course, if you are a dot connector, if you are an ecosystem builder, if you are a person who values Portland and innovation and think that you have a point of view, think that, I don't know, maybe you can make some ridiculous decisions about what Portland should be doing. Let's get you into one of those roles at the Portland Metro Innovation Hub run by PSU. All right? Cool. I, I hope you're doing well. We're going into a, a long weekend in the U.S. I personally am looking forward to the uh, NCAA lacrosse semifinals and championships because I'm a dumb jock and I like lacrosse and I played lacrosse. So I'm going to that's what I'm planning to do with my weekend. I hope you get some downtime. Uh, I hope you get the chance to either work on a side project or rest up or whatever it is you need to do. Hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work. Like all that news was so compelling, I need some more news. Well, that's great. I've got a bunch more news for you right here. Please tune in.